Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. No, there we got John Lewandowski. Hey. Sorry if we sneeze, cough, or anything. Both of us have head colds, hence, with COVID, social distance. Yeah. So, with that, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Today's show is brought to you by the number 35. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't been able to do that joke in so long. All right, so today the Nashville Predators wrapped up their regular season. By the way, for those of you on YouTube, on Wednesday, we will be dropping our season recap. So, um, just letting you know, that will be coming out Wednesday. Um, We'll be giving out our quote-unquote team awards. All righty. So they did take on the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Hurricanes outshot them thirty to twenty-seven. Really? Um, in the first period, the Predators outshot them twelve to ten. Uh, Carolina outshot them in the second period, 10 to, or the, they matched each other in the second period, 10 to 10. Well, can't give Carolina nothing for nothing, but they were consistent. They shout shot the Predators 10 to 5 in the third. Yeah, they did. They, they were consistent, 10 shots a period. <laughs> All righty. Score. Uh, oh, wait, face off. Ha ha. See, I'm, I've been gone. I missed a video and I lost everything. (laughs) (laughs) All righty. Face-offs were 56 to 44%. Nashville took that one. Nashville was one for four on the power play. And Carolina was 0 for four. Uh, Both teams had 17 penalty minutes. Hits were 22 to 14 Nashville. Block shots were 10 to 7 Nashville. Giveaways were 9 to 4 Carolina. Yeah. Carolina had nine giveaways. Uh, the takeaway stats were... Uh, Carolina two, Nashville three. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, that, that is a stat you don't get anyway. All righty. Scoring in the first at the 251 mark. Well, Admiral's folk, folklore legend... Rocco Grimaldi. <laughs> uh, his 10th with an assist from Tanner Janot. That was shorthanded. So that goes against one of Carolina's power plays. Yep. Uh, uh, then scoring at the 429 mark, uh, literally minutes later, was Matt Duchesne uh, with it, his fifth with an assist from Yakov Trennan and Ryan Johansson. Trennan's sixth, Johansson's 15th. All righty. Then up next, we had the second period at the 419 mark. Matt Duchesne again with an assist from Brad Richardson and Nick Cousins. Mm, so for those of you in Wisconsin, you'll get that. Nashville and Florida, eh, come up to Wisconsin, try out some cousin subs. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I'm just cheap plugging away here. Cheap plugging away. All righty. Uh, then scoring Ryan Johansson, his seventh with an assist from Phil Forsberg, his ninth, oh, oh, ninth, his 20th with an assist from Fabro as well, his 10th. That was on the power play. Yeah. And then scoring unassisted in the third at the 57 second mark. Of the third, short-handed Tanner Jado, who literally just outworked their their power play line. Yeah, and, really did. And they wore them out. Uh, I mean, Nashville beat them down, wore them out. Um, in that for Carolina was the bread killer, not in this case, but normally. Uh, was Peter Morazic, and uh, he had 22 saves and 27 shots. 
Um, he was all for two shorthanded. There were two shorthanded shots. They both went in. Yep. In net for Nashville. Now, I'm not crying. You're crying. Every <laughs> day. 24 saves even strength. Six save power play. Had no shots against on the shorthand. 30 for 30. A shutout. Adding him from nine, going into 19th place all time in the NHL record books as in shutouts and in wins. If this was the end, well, dude, you went from 258th overall in the draft to 19th overall in the record books. That is a hell of a career story and a story you will be able to tell your kids and your grandkids. Right. And that is a life, that's a, that's a career some guys wish they had. Yeah. So with that being said, your referees were Gordon, Gordon Dwyer and TJ Luxmore. Uh, much easier game for these two than the last one they had to officiate. Yeah, <laughs> that was that uh, Washington Capitals Rangers game. Yeah, um, linesmen were Mag McPherson and Brian Poncic. Same thing; those were the same guys that were at that game as well. Um, head coach for Carolina is Rod Brendamore. Uh, head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Scratches for Carolina. Now, hear this. These are not injured players. They were rested. Ryan. Jordan Stahl, Cedric Paquette, Doug Hamilton, Brett Pesci, Brock McGinn, Andrei Svechnikov, Alex Nedeljkovic. Why do I feel like I'm talking about a tennis player there? But I'll get into that later. Um, and Jacob Slavin. Nashville. Ryan Ellis. Colton Sissons, Luke Cudden, Matias Echo, Ben Harper, Cal Yardcroft, Victor Arvidsson, Alexander Carrier, Eric Halla, Roman Yossi, Mikel Grandlin, Yusei Saros. But with all of that comes down to this. Pecorine played an amazing game, stood on his head, Gave him the win, showed that he was playoff ready. If you see yeah. the background here, we're playoff ready. We are <laughs> ready. Uh, it, it, it gets to crunch time and you got to be ready. Um, you know, that's probably why. Most took, definitely. That's why I took Saturday off. Uh, you know, I had some family stuff to do, I had friends that needed me elsewhere. And I thank John for coming in and doing that, uh, and Steph. Yeah. Um, but right now, I just want to raise stick and salute Pacarine on an amazing career. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and for Nashville fans, this is something you may not know, but to Admirals fans, he's just as special and important as he is to you guys. The reason yeah. being is he's not just your guys' all-time win as a goalie. He didn't come there until he was 26. He is also the Admiral's all-time winning AHL goalie. Yep. Not all-time because that belongs to Darren Pang, believe it or not. <laughs> there, There's some weird Admiral stats for you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you two, but I believe, do believe it's still Darren Pang. <laughs> But that was last I looked. I could yeah. be wrong. I looked like when Pekka broke the record. I mean, it could be changed by now. Right. You know? But, uh, you know, um, Saros was good when he was here. Uh, we saw no problems with him. We thought he was ready a year before he went up. So, right. <laughs> you know, uh, with that being said, you know, um, I, I I am glad we ended the season this way. Go out swinging. Go out go into the playoffs with momentum. Especially knowing you're playing the team that you just played a back-to-back -back against and won both games. Right. 
Now, hear this. I'm not doing three stars tonight. I'm doing four. The reason I'm doing four, you're going to find out. Uh-oh. There we go. Third star of the game. Or the fourth star of the game, the fans. You guys in Nashville were loud. We could hear you all game. Yeah. You know, we could hear you all game. Every time Pekka did something, you were loud. Every time they hit somebody, you were loud. They, You were loud all game. And I don't think that many teams are ready for that. Right. You know, Nashville's used to it by now. Because, obviously, we don't forget. But there's right. one thing we have. Let, we have one unfinished business, and trust me, I hope it comes down to that. But your third star of the game was Cheddar Jadot with a goal and an assist. Matt Duchesne with two goals and Pekka Rene, number one star, with a shutout. You know, um, enough can't be said about Pekka, but for him, and if this is the last year to be nominated for the Bill Masterton Award, the Bill Masterton Award is given to the player who is outstanding, not only in his locker room, but in his community as well. Right. Um, you know, if anybody exemplifies that in the Preds locker room, it is Pekka. Uh, Pekka, yeah. came, Pekka came to Milwaukee, and we are known for giving those, to having those guys out there. The Bill Masterton Award has gone to the Preds organization four times. You know, uh, yeah. Pekka's, Pekka's undying ability to get into the community and put in the work. Mike Fisher won it. Pe uh, P.K. Subban won it. Pekka Rene won it before. Uh, right. if, if this is the end and he wins it one more time, you know, you can't speak on a better guy. There's nobody better in, in, in this in this organization. Um, right. For a moment. Now, I would have said differently last year because Troy – and pack up both goaltenders. Um, they're just great people. Um, yeah. And that's one of the greatest things I can say about Pekka is, is beyond the player and what he does in the community, for what you see in the community, if you walk up to him, that is what you get. That is right. the Pecorine you get. That is the guy that is, he'll sign anything for you, doesn't even customize it, he'll just sign it. Um, he, he, he will go to any charity function that you ask him to be at. Um, he has no, he does a lot of work with children and cancer and, uh, working yeah. with inner city youth as far as running the blue line buddies. I mean, there's so much that Pekka does in the community. I, I'm just out of things that I can say that at the list. Oh, yeah, long. Yeah. I just don't have time right now. Uh, I know that <laughs> you guys would get bored with me rambling off about what he's doing. All right. So the playoffs are set. Who they're playing. The only teams to be set. Only divisions to be set are the Central and the East. The East, it'll be the Islanders and Pittsburgh. And it'll be Washington and Boston. That will start Saturday. Then we got Nashville versus Carolina and Florida and Tampa. That will start. There's ever battle of Florida going on down there. <laughs> Let's throw the Everblades in there. <laughs> <laughs> and Jacksonville and Orlando. And uh, Florida is a great hotbed for hockey. For those of you that may underestimate it, Florida has a lot of good hockey down there. Yeah, so, they do. Um, much love to the Everblades. So you all see this. Hi. <laughs> um, then we got uh, St. Louis. Right now, as it said, St. Louis taking on Vegas. Uh, Minnesota taking on Colorado. If, if the standings stay as followed uh currently today uh florida beat tampa uh winnipeg lost to vancouver uh, but edmonton uh montreal did squeak out a point so they were able to clinch their spot uh currently still games in progress are uh, St. Louis and LA. They are knotted up at one in Colorado and Vegas. They are knotted up at one. Vegas is currently on the power play. Um, 
Philadelphia beat New Jersey, um, and Boston beat the Islanders. Uh, the uh, Dallas Stars took out the Chicago Blackhawks in OT, but it does them no good. Dallas ended up missing the playoffs by four points. Um, yeah, so as it sits, your bottom team of the season, which at this point, it can't get any worse. Okay, so the lowest team on the totem pole is the Buffalo Sabres. They yeah, finished the season at a 15-34 and 7 clip. However, I believe there's one. Nope. No. And they also finished worst in goals against per, per goals for and a minus 61 goal differential. Wow. Also, also, New Jersey's falls in the same clip with a minus 49 goal differential, which is not the worst. Columbus is at a minus 50, and I'm at a minus 53. Believe it or not, two teams only one team made the playoffs with a minus goal differential. St. Louis. St. Yeah. Louis made the playoffs with a minus 10 goal differential. Oh, wait. Montreal had a minus 8 goal differential. So two teams made it. Now, Montreal could score 8 goals and get a shutout in their next game. A likelihood of that, zero. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But for Nashville, finished the season on a plus two goal differential after entering tonight at a minus three goal differential. So entering tonight, Nashville had a minus three goal differential. They put up a five spot, got a plus two goal differential to end your season in the positive, yeah. on the positive. Matter of fact, Nashville finishes the season on their last 10 at a 7-2-1 and one record, winning the last two. The only team in the division to have a longer win streak is Florida at six, and the last team Florida lost to was the Nashville Predators. Um, best, hottest team in the league right now is Vegas at 8-2. and two. Yep. As well as Florida at eight and two. <laughs> Pittsburgh is sitting at eight and two. Um oh god, Winnipeg's one and nine. They are in the playoff going into the playoffs, they are one and nine in their last ten. And you're gonna be playing Edmonton? Oof. Toronto and Edmonton are going to be meeting in their in their final for their division. Yeah. Um, so, outside of that, final Preds news for the night. The Nashville Predators uh, minor league affiliate for the season, the Chicago Wolves, took on the Rockford Icehawks today. Tomasino had two points. Uh, Philip Tomasino had two points with a goal and an assist. Um, Frederick Allard had an assist. Uh, Tommy Novak had a goal. Uh, Josh Healy had two assists. And uh, Sean Malone had an assist for um, as far as points for your Preds prospect. Um, Ingram was not in net. And uh, do we have any fight? Well, we had a roughing, but nothing Fred related. Oh, yeah, Luke Evangelista had a, an assist as well. Uh, he was drafted last year by the Nashville Predators in the second round. So beyond that, um, we are much looking forward to what next season in the AHL brings. Um, oh. to, 
to my recollection, the AHL will be wrapping up as well soon. Uh, come on. With each division crowning a winner. Correct. Now, the way that the West is doing it is very confusing. Okay. The West is having a tournament even the lowest team can get in. Ah. Uh? All right, they end their season on May 21st. All right, okay. so they are going to have a tournament in Irvine, California. Every team plays in this tournament. It is a play-in tournament. So every team in that division will get in. So the worst team in the division could go on a run <laughs> and, win the, and win the division. Yep. So as confusing as that sounds, I mean, in the, in the Pacific Division, you have Tucson, Ontario. I mean, they're not horrid, but I mean, you think about it, you got Henderson and, and, and Bakersfield, San Diego, San Jose, Colorado, Ontario, and Tucson. Now, you yeah. have this. Every team who has players who are able to go to the minors as of completion of their season, can still send them back now. So okay. say, say this is all over, right? Here's, right? here's where it'll get a little confusing, bit interesting. Uh, I know folks were dragging it out, but we're trying to get you filled in on all the news that could happen before we do a wrap up video. Um, that is that according to my calendar, the Florida Everblades wrap up their season on June 5th. Yeah. Okay, so on June 5th, they wrap up their season. They will be going to the postseason, so by then the Wolves will be done. Anybody who is right. in the Wolves organization that is not on the Predators, that goes to the Predators playoff roster, will probably go to the Florida Everblades to get playoff experience there. Right. Because I'll tell you right now, at the end of the day, playoff experience is key when it comes to all this stuff. And it's it's almost complicated it on how to explain what playoff experience is. But when you look at it, for guys like Tanner Janot to say that his experience in Milwaukee and playing in two playoff two playoff series, or well, he was gonna play in two two playoff series and be on these teams. He said it put him in a good position to be successful at the NHL level. Right. And you cannot put that in, in, into, into everything. All right. So um, that has been our video. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I will talk to you all later. Peace.